Welcome to reality. What's going on, everyone? It's Jaronism, back with another video for you today. Wanted to announce the winners of the ISS name game, and also mention some that I personally thought were great, and even one that broke the internet. So first up is an entry that got no votes, Came from two different people, Jat Howell and Johnny Constone. I thought that they were great suggestions. Uh, it is to call the ISS the Lie SS. So yes, it doesn't qualify for the contest because it is not an acronym. Uh, but Lie SS I thought was great. So you'll probably hear me calling it that for a while. Now before we see the winners, I wanted to read a quote first and talk for a second about science and what it is and what it was supposed to be. But this quote is by Al Hazen, who was an Arab scientist from about a thousand years ago, who was speaking on the scientific method when he said, The seeker after the truth is not one who studies the writings of the ancients and following his natural disposition puts his trust in them, but rather the one who suspects his faith in them and questions what he gathers from them, the one who submits to argument and demonstration and not to the sayings of a human being whose natural is fraught with all kinds of imperfection and deficiencies. Thus, the duty of a man who investigates the writings of scientists, if learning the truth is his goal, is to make himself an enemy of all that he reads, and, applying his mind to the core and margins of its content, attack it from every side. Abu Ali al-Hassan So al-Hazen definitely understood what science was supposed to be. But what happened now? What happened to science? What happened to the scientific method? The point of science is to always try and knock the truth off its perch. When you succeed, you benefit humanity with a new truth and you bring the knowledge of the world together and even closer to total harmony. If you don't succeed, who cares? All you did was further help prove the current scientific belief is true or the theory. And that's what science is. Science is attacking the current dogmas from every angle. If I say the Earth is flat, one of two things is going to happen. One, with everyone's help, it gets proven and the globe theory goes away. Humanity benefits. And if it's not true, well, then people got to do a little bit of science. And in the process, we learned that the globe was absolutely the truth. That's the only two things that can happen. But instead, we get the third thing. We get science's army of drones, the 21st century intellectual evangelists, going video to video, preaching the gospel of Newton, Einstein, and Elon Musk, bringing absolutely nothing to the table but hate, ridicule, personal attacks, and parroted mathematics. They are afraid of finding out that they were taught lies, and they'll fight. They'll fight you for something they've never even seen. They just don't get it. They're just so afraid of finding out the truth and learning that they were taught lies that they absolutely abandon the scientific method altogether and turn their current beliefs into dogmatic absolutes that you better dare not question. So let me go over a quick example or two of some things which no one, no Glober, has been able to answer for me yet. Let's take a look at the screen and we'll call this a uh, gravity ball. Let's picture that that big rock there, the gray one, let's say it's five miles wide by five miles tall. So that's as high as a plane flies in its height, you know, 30,000 feet or so. And it's five miles wide as well. So it's a huge rock. Now, if we took a marble and we tried to stick it to the side of that rock, what would happen? Would it stay to the rock or would it fall down? Well, it's going to fall down back to the earth, correct? And if you ask somebody who's a globe believer, why does that happen? Of course, they'll say, because the earth is the bigger attracting body. It has more gravitational pull than the five mile rock. So it pulls the, the marble away from the rock and down to the ground. Makes sense. Until you bring in the moon. Let's think about the earth now. Erase this example. Think of the earth and think of the sun. Which one is the bigger pulling mass? The sun. So why is it that when our moon goes around the earth and it passes in between the earth and the sun, how could it stay attached to the earth? The bigger attracting body, just like in the example being the, the ground, the earth, needs to pull the moon towards it. 
There is no equilibrium. There's nothing that could happen to where we could drop that marble from that rock and it would magically balance in between the earth and the rock. It's all nonsense. They pick and choose where they want to use their little terms and it's all conjecture. It's all crap. There's not even such thing as orbits. In this next example, I just drew a little quick picture because I see a lot of people who are trying to prove whether or not rockets can actually work in space. And the few people that I've watched their videos that say they absolutely can are using an example where they're putting a rocket inside of some sort of vacuumed chamber, either a vacuum box or a vacuum tube. Whatever they're using has walls, a ceiling, and a floor. So again, how can you test anything for the vacuum of space? Take a look at this picture on the screen. Remember that there is nothing for as far as you can see in any direction or as far as you even could conceive. There is nothing. So what that means is it's impossible to test anything for the vacuum of space here on Earth. Ask Elon Musk, say, where is your wall-less, ceiling-less, floor-less vacuum chamber that you test for your rockets? How do you know how they react in empty, free space? And lastly, for another globe example of why it just doesn't work, as soon as somebody can show me in any setting, it could be in a lab, it could be anywhere, where you're going to rotate a sphere about its axis, and that sphere will hold water to its surface as it spins. Show me that. Show me it in space. Show me it in a vacuum chamber. Show me it in a non-vacuum chamber. If you can't show it and you just tell me that's what's going on, that's not scientific. It's simply your ideas, your theory that can't be proven. Well, then it shouldn't be being taught in schools. So last thing before we get to the winners. Uh, is that if you're watching this, even if you don't believe a word I'm saying, or you think the idea of a flat earth is just the most asinine belief of all time, then at least join us in doing some testing. At least try and put the pressure on NASA that will either prove their theories or not. The most important thing is to prove that we were all taught the truth or were we taught lies. And that can only be done with help from everyone. So I don't care if you're a globe believer, Concave, convex, flat, hollow, anybody. I want rustlers, cutthroats, murderers, bounty hunters, desperados, mugs, pugs, thugs, nitwits, halfwits, dimwits, vipers, snipers, con men, Indian agents, Mexican bandits, muggers, buggerers, bushwhackers, horn swagglers, horse thieves, bull dykes, train robbers, bank robbers, ass kickers, sh kickers, and Methodists. You heard it. Even Methodists. All right, before we get to the top 10, I wanted to start with just one honorable mention. I thought it was really good. It's not really eligible to be a winner, but uh, nonetheless, I think it's pretty impressive. It is the ISS, or the International Space Scamming Scheme, that takes all your tax money and gives you fake CGI bullshit images and laughs at you because the great thing about science is it's true whether you think so or not. Fabulous job to... Just need to say, congrats for your honorable mention. And now, top ten. So, here we go with our new names for the ISS. Number ten. Indoctrinating Sheeple System. <laughs> In space. Psych. <laughs> Number eight. I scam slaves. <laughs> Number seven. International science scam. <laughs> Number six. Illuminati sphere scam. <laughs> Number five, I serve Satan. <laughs> Number four, I stopped showering. <laughs> Number three, the illegitimate science scam. <laughs> and that is good enough for third place with 27 votes and a $5 gift card to Liberty Sounds 87. 
Number two, my personal favorite, the International Shit Show. <laughs> and that's good enough for second place with 68 votes. $5 gift card goes to Mac Swain. And a winner, number one. International Space Simulator. <laughs> and by far in first, with 90 votes, Space Shot 76 gets a $20 gift card. So congratulations. Now, I still have to say, how can you beat International Shit Show? Just too good. At least you won something. Now, I also had to create a new award for this next person who had 49 votes. Should have given him a solid third place finish. But someone cleared his 49 thumbs up. Certainly wasn't I. I don't even have that ability. And also cleared all the sub comments of his. They're all raced. So I don't like to make accusations or point fingers. But let's see if his answer gives us any clues. He came up with Israeli shekel supplier. <laughs> now that is good. So to Mr. Darren Garachi goes the first ever You Broke the Internet Name the ISS Award. Good enough for a $10 gift card. Congratulations, guys. Uh, message me with your email address and tell me what kind of gift card you want and I'll give it out to you. So, thanks for playing. And now, it's time for Intellectual Scientific Thoughts by Jaronism. Today's scientific thought is an exact quote from Lawrence Krauss. The only thing I'd like to say is that it's really amazing because if you think about it, everything we see is kind of sort of accidental and at a fundamental level is quite different. And we're only here because we have mass and just because of the Higgs field. Intellectual Lawrence Krauss. So thank you guys very much for your support. Thank you for sharing the videos like you always do. Remember to like and subscribe and all that jazz. Like uh, Jazz Sinclair, you know, it's Jazz Sinclair time, it's Jazz Sinclair time, it's Jazzy Jasmine time. It, sorry, I know, couldn't go one video without singing. Uh, just a little shout out, Jazz Sinclair, what's up, my buddy. Lots of videos coming out, so please keep your eyes peeled. I leave you today with a song that I found on YouTube by Smooth McGroove, and the link's in the description. And the name of the song is Jaren, but it is spelled differently, but I'm going to go ahead and pretend like the song was written for me. So you should all do the same. Be kind to each other. And don't lie to each other. And just remember to open your mind, because there's truth inside. And the moral today is it's just another day with the international shit show circling high yeah. above. This has been Jaronism. Until next time. Peace. I know this dude named Jaren and he's looking real fine And no, I'm not a homo, but I gotta try to make him mine Cause he holds all of the secrets that the ancients once kept But the way to Jaren's heart is proving you have once leapt From a volcano or a cliff or an airplane into danger Without fear, crying, screaming, waking babies in their mangers He can smell your fear from a thousand miles away And if you try to deceive him, well, today's your last day You can bet he doesn't want a coward or a liar coming up to him saying Can you be my friend? Maybe you can man it up and down in front of him, show him you are strong enough to go out on a limb. He's got enough ladies lining number on the block to fill 747's loading number on the clock. A lot of men are crying every single day, praying for a Jaren day, but they can't afford to parts of pay. All the women want him, and all dudes want to be Jaren. But the fact of the matter is, there's only one Jaren. He's got an internet following that forms a giant group. He can translate ancient tablets using alphabet soup, which he rarely even does, though it fetches big money. He doesn't even need it, cause he sweats pure honey. His fans send him gifts, make him gifs. Jump off cliffs just for the once in a lifetime honor of seeing Jaren take a sip of his famous oat stew. That's right, he's a stew chef, you may say. What's a stew chef? Well, you've probably never seen a stew chef because there's only one stew chef and it's Jaren cooking it up. He's known for only filling friends and family's cups with his decadent sludge that he boils all night, every night, all night, every night. It's, it's out, out of sight. sight. He can do a dance that makes everybody pee their beds and make a mess of cause stress. He's on a mission with the Jerry Berry Blitz and the Jerry Berry Twist. He's riling up the world. You can do the Jerry Berry Blitz and the Jerry Berry Twist. You can imitate the best just like the rest. Come on, Jared, show the world what you got now. He's gonna show you his dance, he's gonna show you his skills. 
his dancing skills. Check him out, y'all. Jaren's powers grow with every fight and every fight that he fights he destroys his opponent and leaves a sticky mess on the ground he wages war when provoked and when provoked he starts to smoke out of his butthole and that's when you run away or die cities topple buildings fall mountains melt and rivers stall when Jaren says so cause he does what he wants when he wants sovereign nations all bow down when Jaren comes around they know they can't match his skills yeah they've all heard this song he's lived for thousands of years and caused innumerable tears in broken so many any hearts i just don't know where to start his flow's unbreakable swagger unshakable his style's impeccable and you can't do anything when he can beat a pizza prize bowl girls want to marry him but a mate would only slow him down and besides you know that he would never ever share his crown he's left everyone he's met depressed torn up and so forlorn what's scary is you haven't even seen his final form